Have you guys ever seen those videos of literal, like, immigrant children being put through the immigration asylum court system? And a lot of time they're not even given counsel. Get ready to appreciate the system. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Immigration Judge William Soffer, sitting in the Immigration Court in Portland, Oregon. These are removal proceedings in the matter of Lisa Gonzalez. The respondent is present in court, but uh, without an attorney. For the government uh, this morning, Mr. Shore is appearing on behalf of the Office of Chief Counsel. Also present uh, here in court is the Spanish translator. That's why she has headphones. Not only does she not have legal representation, she doesn't even speak the language of the court. What do you think the odds are of you successfully defending an asylum claim in a language you don't know in a court whose laws you're unaware of? Now to the respondent, do you uh, speak and understand Spanish? Si. Do you want this hearing conducted in Spanish? Si. Government charges that you're a native and citizen. Of Is representation not guaranteed to non citizens? Uh, it's not a matter of whether you're a citizen, it's the type of proceeding. Immigration courts do not necessarily guarantee you uh, uh, due counsel, whereas um, uh, criminal cases do. El Salvador, and that you are present in the United States without legal permission or parole. Have you talked to an immigration attorney? How are you supposed to defend yourself then? You don't. It's over. She's not going to get the grant. Let's go, my dude. Good luck. Are you a little nervous this morning? See? Do you understand what these proceedings here in court are all about? You know what a lawyer is? No? Do you have a lawyer? No? I know the impulse here is to hate the judge, but unfortunately there's literally nothing the judge can do. Um, he, you know, as an officer of the court, he has to follow the rules. That's literally, like, he literally has to. Even if he's, like, deferential. Like, the, the judge probably killed himself after this. Wrong, he can refuse to take the case. Doesn't that just, um, kick them to another person, though? If they refuse to take the case, wouldn't it just, um, it would just go to another person? And even if he, um, I think the concern would be that if the judge just, like, let everyone in, like, if, like, if the judge was just like, okay, you go in, you go in, like, these outcomes could be appealed, couldn't they? Like, or, like, th there could be, like, an investigation if they felt like the judge was just, like, letting, like, with, with an open door all the immigrants in, all the asylum seekers. And then if they, if, yeah, they would, yeah, he would end up getting, like, ousted. Uh, he would lose his seat. They might even relook at the um, the asylum grants that he gave. Like they they might even retroactively revoke them. I don't know if they can do that for immigration cases, but sometimes when judges are found to be acting in bad faith, you know they they can like review the cases, and these people would go to court a second time, and we would have the headphone baby uh, case again. So yeah, I don't I don't know if there's anything the judge can do at all. I'm pretty sure this is a reenactment based on real transcripts. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, yeah, because of course this is like dramatized, but this, this, this literally happens. There is actual court footage, and I think these are real, yeah. Yeah, this is from the, uh, the, the unaccompanied documentary. She could probably figure, you know, what, what it's about. So literal five-year-olds have to go to court? Yeah, or, or younger. Yeah, that's it. If they are seeking asylum, which every individual member of a family seeking asylum, anyone, no matter their age, is, they're all seeking asylum, they would all be immigrants and therefore they all seek asylum so they all get their court dates what do they do when they're literal babies who can't talk the ba the baby loses that's it the, you you're thinking there's like a limit here where human decency kicks in but there isn't that's it the baby sits there and then they lose the case you know what a lawyer is yeah. i refuse to believe this is real is there could i do i know they don't let cameras in that often. Here's an ACLU video right here. Literally. Here's ACLU. Elmo, what country are you from? I a red country. Uh, the re red country? New York. Massachusetts. 
Do you know what a country is? There you go. Tens of thousands of children with no legal representation. Yeah. Are you afraid to return to your home country? A senior Justice Department immigration judge told the ACLU, I've taught immigration law literally to three and four year olds. They get it. The system works. I've never heard such a stupid, stupid, stupid thing from a judge or anybody else. I'm hearing some conflicting responses here. Do you have any evidence that you were born in Israel? Oh, no. Uh... <laughs> this is a very tonally jarring video. This is a very, uh, you know, um, yeah, a lot going on here, I think. Yeah, this is uh this is the 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 Christian goodness of the United States right here. Really the 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 Christ-like um god damn it, man. The 1-year-old was pretty calm. He was dressed in a green button-up shirt. He had dress shoes at first and at some point they came off because he was in socks by the time he saw the judge. Um and the judge seemed uh you know, he had he had some misgivings about why this child was in his courtroom and and how the government was going to meet its deadline to reunite children who had been separated from their families. This was during the Trump administration when the explicit policy of the administration involved the separation of the parents from their children, like splitting the families deliberately in a policy that, as far as I can tell, was explicitly just to promote human cruelty. I don't think, I, having reflected upon the policy, I genuinely believe that no one could make a defense for it outside of being evil. I don't think there's, there's, I don't think there's anything else really to pull from it. Wrong, it was for human trafficking. Yeah, and that was like a lie. Like that was completely made up. The idea that they were separating parents and children so they could see if the kids were being trafficked with different parents, that never happened. Like, that was completely made up. That was not a process by which that could happen. The attorney representing the boy asked the judge to grant him a voluntary departure, which allows the government, base, the government to fly the child back to Honduras, where he's from, to be reunited. Kelly admitted it was to deter, deter on live TV. Yeah, that was the real reason. It was like, by, 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 ba by throwing children in concentration camps, um, you're deterring immigrants. It's like, hey, if you get up here with your family, like, we'll separate you, you'll never see your children again, and they're going to rot in, like, um, in, like, a pit in the ground. Like, that's it. Like, yeah. With his parents where they both are right now. The child came with his father. Um, we don't know when, so we don't know how long he's been separated from his father, but the father was, um, removed from the country. And the attorney who was representing the boy said that the father was removed under quote-unquote false pretenses that he would be able to leave with his son and wasn't able to. So now the Trump administration is under court order to reunite these kids. Um, for children who are five and under, they're supposed to be reunited by... Ah, uh, yeah, I remember this. After the El Paso mass shooting, one of the survivors got deported back to Mexico. At least she got, like, the quintessential American experience before leaving, right, you know? It's like going to, um, Orlando, Florida, and then you haven't really gone unless you've gone to Disney World. It's like, okay, well, here, this is the most American thing you can do. Yeah, tú eres el oficial de inmigración. The government has separated 2,000 kids from their parents. They are being held in so-called tender age shelters. With their mothers. Oh, they're being given coloring books so that they can represent themselves in court. I see. Coloring book for migrant children representing themselves. Okay, so this is the official U.S. immigration uh, uh, a asylum court system coloring book so they can be like, this is a lawyer. You don't have one. This is the Constitution. You'd like color it in. Yeah. Illegal entry is a crime as determined by Congress. Every child that crosses the border without permission has an immigration court case to fight. The U.S. government is actually expecting these children, as young as 18 months, unable to speak, to represent themselves in court against the government attorney. These fools have no chance. As a government attorney, I would be able to effortlessly defeat any number of children in a legal battle.
we go. Lawyers in Miami. Okay, gotcha. Great. Great. Good. Great. Cuando cruzaste la frontera, hablaron con inmigración. Me dijeron que sí, ¿no? ¿Cómo te sentiste? Poco preocupado. Poco preocupado, me imagino, sí. Triste. Un poco triste. Everyone in America, including non-citizens, have a right to fair trial. However, under this administration, immigration judges are under pressure to meet quotas. They're expected to close 700 cases every year. And we're seeing that children's cases are being sped up. ¿Quién es esta persona? El juez, muy bien. ¿Alguien me puede explicar lo que hace un juez? We were recently in court with a three-year-old. ¿Alguien va a ser nuestro juez? She can't say anything, not even her name. Tú vas a hacerle las preguntas. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Ocho. The child can't even sit on the chair by herself. Eh, ¿A dónde estás viviendo ahora? Eh, no sé. We have to physically pick up the child and place her on the chair. ¿Estás yendo a la escuela? One of the best things we could do to expedite this process is that I don't know if judges should even be looking at these um, these uh, asylum claims. Judges should get involved when a law's been broken. Like, judges should preside over criminal and civil cases. Looking to stay in the U.S. is not a criminal... Like, I don't, I don't think this warrants the attention of a judge. Judges are expensive. They are incredibly well-educated. They shouldn't be... Like, you shouldn't have a guy who spends his whole life learning the law, and his job is to, like, listen to three-year-olds drool into a microphone so to explain how they're, like... Like, th this is not, like, an appropriate use. But we're, this is, like, the criminalization of the immigration process, right? Like, by having them have a court date at all, we frame them as criminals. That's why people call them illegal immigrants, as opposed to undocumented immigrants. That's why they have their court dates. That's why it's done by a judge. It's because, like... The, the implication is that the, the, enter, the entry of the country is a crime, even though it's not, that has to be amended with a, a legal battle, which we shouldn't be doing at all. If we should have, I want open borders, obviously, but if we can't have that, then like, honest to God, what we should have are just like very, very simple, um, like basic like quota and, and checkup systems, you know? Just have like, you know, appoint them, locate them where necessary, just have like immigration centers, and just have it be their job to just keep up with recent immigrants into the country, you know? If you have undocumented immigrants or whatever, they could just go on over there and they could just set up in the system. And even if they don't have an SSN yet, like it's just a basic provision as they make their way through the more complicated legal processes, you know? It's complicated stuff, but it could be done. We're capable of doing it. It's not impossible. Would you say having a border protects us from the cartel? We don't need protection from the cartel. The cartel poses literally no threat to us whatsoever. The cartel is not capable of getting a foothold in the United States government. They have a foothold in the Mexican government, and that's where they're stopping. They're not moving over. We, have, we do not fear the cartel. If it, the cartel also does not want to cause trouble with us. You know why? Because if they started causing trouble with us, we would declare a fucking special, special military operation in Mexico, and we would fucking atomize them. The cartel would, as, you know, as is the case with every other force on Earth, uh, you know, does not want to incur, like, American military reprisal. Do you really think the cartel wants us to, like, use our drones, uh, like, flying overhead to find, like, if, if we wanted to, we could find where their cartel bosses are staying. It would not be that hard. They're not like Mujahideen, Taliban, Al-Qaeda guys who all, like, hide in a mountain somewhere, you know? These guys have mansions. We, we could, we could vaporize them. No, we don't need to fear the cartel. Besides, we work with the cartel. They enable the trafficking of drugs into our country, which our people want. It's the free market, you know? Can we destroy the cartel by decriminalizing all drugs? It would certainly help. Allowing them to be produced uh, in-house would definitely help.